some of the tips I'm going to give you are little tricks that I use to help keep my semi treat vanders and papillionanthus in flower just about the whole year. Good morning from the Nature Company. Today we're going to be discussing a little bit about your semi treat vanders, the papillionanthus, the treat vanders, and we'll talk a bit about their care. Yeah, we've got one that's beginning to grow nicely, but we're not getting an upright as much of an upright plant as we'd like. So what I'm just going to be doing just to propagate it as well as keep this neater is the parts that are heading off, I just want to trim off. Yeah, we're making sure that there's enough roots so that the plant can continue growing well. Um, this, because I'm going to be using it for propagation purposes, I'm going to be cutting it into as many pieces as I can so I can grow them on further. Yeah, I'm going to be making sure with each cut that I make, there's going to be at least three roots on each section. So here we're going to be going. That's one section that I'll use. Here we can see we can cut again. This one is going to have its three roots. So I'll get in and give it a cut there. So there I have my three sections. This has already got a flower spike. Usually I wouldn't be cutting it off when the flower spike was coming. But for demonstration purposes, there we go. So always remember, sharp disinfected tools to make sure we're not spreading disease around us through our plants. Okay, now I'll go show you the media and how to plant these up. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be mixing one part coarse river sand with one part good quality potting medium. Yeah, we have a nice loose grade of top quality potting medium. As you can see it's fairly coarse, it's light and well aerated. Okay, all we're going to be doing is giving this a good thorough mixing, making sure it's evenly mixed. You may be wondering why I've done such a large quantity of my potting medium. It's because I've done a lot of cuttings of my semi treat vanders and the papillionanthus. So we're going to be putting them into fairly large size pots and believe me the media doesn't go very far. So we'll give it a start, we'll probably manage to do about other 25 of the small pots or about 10 of the bigger pots. So we'll start with the small pots and let's get going. Planting them up is an easy task. All we're going to do is we're going to be taking our plant, putting it into the empty pot so that the roots go down so we don't have to worry about breaking the roots as we try and get it into the medium. Fill the pot about halfway. Then we take a handful of organic pellets. 
an organic fertilizer. And just put them in at slow release. And of course, a bit of bone meal. The bone meal is going to help with the root growth and we want these to settle in quickly and get the roots to grow in so our plants can be full and healthy. And then just top it up. Go. Just tap the pots a couple of times. There we go, it settled in nicely. Settled up straight. We're not pushing down the set soil too much because we don't want it to be too compact. The river sand allows good drainage and still gives the air gaps along with the coarse potting medium so they'll all grow well. Some of the tips I'm going to give you are little tricks that I use to help keep my semi treat vandas and papillionanthas in flower just about the whole year. Um, your plants are eventually going to get nice and big. This way you'll have blooms constantly. You can see all the old flower spikes and the new ones coming. So you're going to get constant reblooming, reflowering. And flowers all year, even through the winter. Shall we see another good example? Two new flower spikes coming up. It's going to rebloom beautifully. So, what we've done is, as I've shown you, just that basic potting mix. One of the tricks I use is planting them into black pots. The sun shines on the black pot, warming it up helps dry out the media faster so your roots aren't sitting soaking in the, the media that's holding water for too long and one of the tips necessary to get your semi to reach banders to flower is the sun put them out in the full sun as many hours a day as they can as you can give them Another issue you can have with your vandas is they lack high humidity and a fair amount of water. So this is one of the reasons that we use the sand potting media mix is so that I don't have to water them every day. It keeps a bit of moisture there and allowing the humidity to come up from the plant as the pot warms up and it's going to hold the moisture for longer so I don't have as many troubles with the plants drying out. And the other tip for using the soil potting media mix is so your plants don't dry out too quickly. The semi treat vandas require a fair amount of water and high humidity and as the pots warm up evaporating the water this provides the humidity it needs and also it keeps moisture for longer so I'm not going to have to water them as often it makes them a wonderful easy to grow plant and it's going to give you joy forever tricks and tips I can give you to help you have success with your semi treat vandas uh, don't forget strap leaf vandas are another kettle of fish don't try this way with them it's not going to work. You'll rot your roots and destroy your plant. But with the semi treat vandas and the Pipilianthas, uh, this is a highly successful method. So, what they need 
to grow well is high humidity, a fair amount of water, the full sun. Don't forget the full sun. This is the way they're going to flower their best. And higher temperatures generally help, but they do cope with some, some lower temperatures too. They also have high nutrient requirements. That's one of the reasons for supplying them with the bone meal and the organic pelletized fertilizer. And then I'm still going to be feeding every week with an organic foliar spray. This will keep your plant in tip-top health and help it produce as much flowers as it can. They can be fairly quick growing if looked after properly.